Welcome back everyone to another video here in the Unknown Coder YouTube channel. Today we have another Elite Code problem, this time 414, third maximum number. This one is a little bit simpler one and it should be a lot easier to explain than the last episode. And this problem states that we're given an integer array called nums and we want to return the third distinct maximum number in this array. This one isn't too crazy. And if the third maximum does not exist, then we want to go ahead and return the maximum number instead. So what does it mean by third maximum number? Let's go ahead and hop down below to some examples so I can show you all. So for example, number one, we're going to be given an array called nums, which has three, two, and one. And in this array, the first largest number is three, the second largest is two, and the third largest is equal to one. So logically, what we would return is one, because it's the third largest number in the array. Let's take a look at the second one. The second example, we're given a nums array equal to one and two. Here, the first largest number is equal to two. The second largest is equal to one. And the third largest does not exist. So in this case, it says to return the largest number, which would be two. So that's how we get two for that output. Let's take a look at the final example they give us. In example number three, they're gonna give us a nums array equal to two, two, three, and one. So in this case, the largest value is three. The second largest is equal to two. And the third largest is equal to one. Notice that we have two twos. It doesn't matter because it is gonna count as the same one. So once again, the third largest value is one, and we'll go ahead and return that. So let's go ahead and hop back up to the constraints to see if we can pick out any more information before we try to solve this. Back to the problem, our first constraint is one is less than or equal to nums that length is less than or equal to 10 to the four. So this one's very simple. This one's just saying the length of nums is between one and 1000. They're not gonna trick you or anything. They're not gonna give you an array of zero where there's no maximum whatsoever. So that's nice to know. The next one is pretty important. The next one is stating that negative two to the three is less than or equal to nums of i is less than or equal to two to the 31 minus one. Basically what this is saying is that the values inside of num can be the max value and min value of integer, which kind of foils a lot of people's plans when they do this, because normally whenever you're going to find a max value, you need to set that max value to some very, very small number to start out. You can't use integer.min because technically there could be a value that's equal to that and break everything. So I do have a workaround for that. Don't worry. So once again, our goal is going to be go through the array and can keep track of the top three elements as we go. And we'll go ahead and return that third largest. And this one is a very, very very simple problem to solve. All we really have to do is loop through the array once, manage variables for one, two, and three, and then go ahead and return that third one. The only thing we have to deal with is the possibility of there being a value equal to the minimum value of an integer. So to get around that, we can actually just use longs instead and then cast them back to integers at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at our pseudocode and then some example walkthroughs. Let's get started with our pseudocode. So we're gonna start out with saying let first, second, and third equal to negative two raised to the 64. This is basically setting all of these values to the smallest number that you can set along to. Then we want to say for each element in nums, we want to check if num is greater than first. If this is the case, we're going to shift all the max values down one. We're going to check if num is greater than second, but also less than first. If this is the case, we're going to go and shift second and third down one. And finally, we're going to check to see if num is greater than third, but less than the others. If this is the case, we're just going to set third. Then finally, we'll return third or first. And of course, that's going to depend on whether or not we have have a third greatest or not. So like I said, this one is a very, very, very simple problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of our more complicated examples and we'll hop on delete code and take a look at how we can do this. For example, we're going to go with nums equal to two, two, three, and one. So like I said before, we're going to go and set to first, second, and third equal to negative two to the 64. Then we're going to go ahead and start looping. So for i equal to zero, nums of i is equal to two. And now two is greater than first. So go ahead and set everything. Set third equal to second. Set second equal to first. Then set first equal to two. We can move on. So i equal to one. Nums of i is equal to two again. So here we already have two in here. So we're just going to go ahead and skip for i equal to two. Nums of i is equal to three. So now three is even greater than first. So go ahead and swap everything. So we'll set third to second. We'll go ahead and set second equal to two. And we'll go ahead and set first equal to three. Then for i equal to three. We got nums of i equal to one. One is less than first and second, but greater than third. So one is greater than third. So we'll set third to one. And now we have first equal to three, second equal to two, and third equal to one. So now since we have third, we're at the end of the loop, we want to go ahead and return third, which of course is one. So like I said, nice and simple algorithm. Let's go ahead and hop on leak code and get this coded out. We're going to start out with three variables. First one is going to be a long first equal to long 
dot min value. Then we're gonna have a long second, also equal to long dot min value. Then we'll have a long third equal to long dot min value. Then we're actually gonna use an enhanced for loop because for some reason it's faster for final int num and nums. And we'll go ahead and say if our num is greater then first, if this is the case, we're gonna set third equal to second, set second equal to first, and set first equal to num. Otherwise, else if, if our first is greater than num and our num is greater than second, then we wanna set third equal to second, we wanna set second equal to num, and then else if our second is greater than num and our num is greater than third, then we just wanna go ahead and set third, and then that is it. Then outside of the for loop at the end, we wanna go ahead and return third equal to long dot min value so if we're still equal to min value we want to go ahead and return first as an int otherwise we want to return third as an int let's go ahead and submit and see if i typo anything and there we go we get zero millisecond runtime if you do this for loop with a regular i with a regular iterative for loop it actually gives you one millisecond i found that up here which is interesting but if you found this valuable or you learned something please be sure to like comment and subscribe as always i'm ethan encoder i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next episode